He will reward me. Remember what I told you? He'll reward you for the effort, not the result. Because he blocked you. Or he blocked me. This will change your life. This concept will change your life. You will stop complaining and blaming. You know the blaming game? We are so good at it. It's always someone else's fault. You're all laughing. Because it hits home, as we say. So, Bismillah. So, let's come to reality. What is the first sign? How many of you say, I have Qalbu Salim? Alhamdulillah. There was no hand. <laughs> Period. I didn't see one. But how many of you say, I may have some signs of Al Qalbu Salim? Some. I didn't say number. Maybe one. Maybe two. There are 11. I don't have the 11, all of them. Maybe. How many? We all have. You will see it. We all. But it's not a constant character. And what we are going to try to do is to say to myself and to yours, I'll work on it. It's going to be in my to-do list. Do you have to-do list in Malaysia? Right? We all do. Right? Every morning. And the list gets longer and the achievements get shorter. <laughs> right? Exactly. Bismillah. So the first sign which I shared with you yesterday, and I'm going to just repeat it quickly, for, again, for those of you who joined us, may Allah reward you, that your focus is Al-Akhirah. Your focus, when you wake up in the morning, till you sleep in the evening, your focus in everything, you're seeing your place in the hereafter. You're seeing your place in the hereafter, meaning... I came this morning, as I am driving, I know Allah will reward me, and this will elevate my state, my state from maybe the first level of Jannah to the second level of Jannah. I know this is something pleasing to Allah, and I'm going to be standing in front of him. He'll say, Saturday, you did not sleep and missed your Fajr. No, you woke up and did your Fajr, and you came. So the focus is at Akhirah. And I asked you this question yesterday. Why do you want to get married? Why do you want to have children? Why do you want to have a career? Why do you want to be rich? All these daily questions we all ask ourselves and we teach our children. This, the answer should be for my akhirah. Meaning, I want to be rich. Why? Majority of us to have good life. That's not akhirah. So I can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. That's your akhirah. Man kanat dunya ham this is beautiful hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. And he knows you and me very well. And he said, Man kanat dunya hamma, whomsoever this life, this worldly life, is the focus. What will happen? Farraqallahu alayhi shamlah. He or she, because they are so focused on dunya, on this life. What will happen is you will have so many things to worry about. So many. You look at somebody and says, what is wrong with you this morning? You don't know how many things I have to think of. God, this list never ends. Every time I finish, the list gets longer. Things to worry. Because I'm focused on this dunya. And Rasulullah I'm teaching you and me, if you make your focus akhirah, the worries of dunya, because he said the opposite. وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةَ هَمَّةً جَمَعَ اللَّهُ لَهُ شَمْلَةً Allah will make you see things very easy. Not a big deal. It's going to happen. And people look at you and say, how? I don't know. Allah will take care of it. When you say it this way, your focus is al-akhirah. Are you all with me? Okay, good. And so the first thing is your worries. You want your worries to be less. Nothing will change in your life, by the way. The worries are there. The kids are giving you a hard time. There is sickness in the family. There is a job, possibly, I will be laid off. All these worries of dunya, they're not going to change. It's not Allah going to remove them. He can. But in general, he will make you worry less. And, one, and then Allah will always make you see that you are rich here. 
جعل غناه في قلبه. You will feel your rich. Rich meaning not necessarily you have. You know what is the best definition of richness? When you don't need. When you don't need people or you don't feel you need. You see people buying and buying and you say, I don't need it. And you really don't need it and you can buy it. And you say, I don't need it. Then Allah put richness inside your heart. And the third one is the best one. And he says, who makes akhirah his focus? Allah will make all your worries. One, richness in your heart. And the third one, look at this. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةً Dunya will run after you. You don't want it. And it will run after you. If anybody in this room lived this, anybody lived this, you really don't care about something at all. And you spend that worries and that time in something pleasing to Allah. You don't know how it is. And that thing that everybody wants fall in your lap. Yes? I don't hear it. Really? Alhamdulillah. That's it. So number one, you have a qalbun salim, a sound heart. When what you think, when you wake up and you go to bed and during the day, the focus is al akhirah Is this lecture will get me to Jannah? Is this computer will make, will witness for me, not against me? Is the dress I am wearing, is the thing I am buying, every single detail. In the beginning it will be overwhelming, but it will become a habit. Practice it. Remind each other. Practice it. It's for Allah. That's for Allah when your focus is Al-Akhirah. That's number one. Tayyip? Number two. This is going to be the new things we will start today. How many of us disobey Allah again on daily basis? Really? There's angels in this room. <laughs> Where is Brother Ammar? I don't think I need to give lectures here. <laughs> and mashallah, tabarakallah. Come on. Right? So what happens when I disobey Allah? This will tell you where is your heart. There's two scenarios. There's three scenarios. At least what's coming to my mind. First one is what? The most common one. Denial. Yes? I didn't do it. Especially if someone is seeing you. It's not me. Well, I saw you. And Allah is seeing you. Has already seen you. Two, the commonest one is what? You justify it. You justify it. I need it. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to look at it. It just came. I don't care about it. You're looking. You justify it. What is the big deal? Why you're making this deen so difficult? Don't you hear this all the time? All the time. Nobody tells you, think of Al-Akhirah. It's like, why you're worried? Why you're making the deen too hard? Come on, it's a big deal. Allah is ghafoor rahim. Allah will forgive. The constant justify and the third belittle it belittle what you are doing or what I did and I want you to memorize this statement you'll hear it a lot inshallah in two weeks another book is going to come out it's called alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allah put the barakah in it it's called sins the poisons of the heart it's already on pre-order on Amazon and you can order it from the uh, publisher also. The publisher is actually in England. And one of the, and it's all about what the sins do to me and to my heart. We never think of this. We never put one plus one equal to when it sins. When I looked at something haram, it is going to affect me. It will, but we don't pay attention to it. Don't you belittle any bad deed you do. Don't say, what did I do? It's minor. And this is what they teach you. They say, لا صغيرة مع إصرار ولا كبيرة مع استغفار. Memorize this. There is no major sin 
if you followed it by asking Allah for forgiveness. And there is no minor sin as if you keep doing it. It will become major. So don't you ever belittle a small sin. Now, I, when I share this with you, I don't want you to think of anybody else. This is not about somebody you know. This, it's about me. Taskiyah, the process of purification of the heart, is all about me, not you. And I say this all the time, all of you are better than me in the sight of Allah. So don't judge people by the outside. Because the outside means nothing with Allah. In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ajisamikum. Allah doesn't look at the way we look and the shape. Walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. But he looks at the hearts and what we do. So when you do something, again, I'm going to keep saying you and I, not somebody else. When I do something, I didn't wake up for Fajr. How common is this? Especially on weekends. How common? Not common? If it's not common, I'm leaving. <laughs> Again, you don't need me, right? How common? Come on. Common, right? Especially when the day becomes, when the night becomes short. When Isha at 11, Fajr at 3. And, and this is happening next week when I'm going to be in London. That's, the, that's how it's going to be. By the time you say, Salaamu Alaikum for the Isha, it's Allahu Akbar Fajr. <laughs> right? Almost. So the point is, when I didn't wake up for Fajr, and I want you all to think with me, and then after this we'll take a break, a little bit. What is the normal scenario? I didn't wake up for Fajr. Don't think of your children, it's you. What happens usually? I was tired. The alarm did not go on. Can you hear one time in, in the week? Don't you hear this? Yes? Yes? And then what do I do? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, let, let's go and do qada and I will pray and, khala, and life goes on. I did not look at it as I have done something big in the sight of Allah. And this is what they teach you, is don't look at what you did. Look at who you disobeyed. Don't look at what you did. Look at who you disobeyed. And you should say, wow, still doing this? Still Fajr is a struggle? When are we going to change? Ya Rabbi, please help me. And then you sit and you think, and you say, why did I not wake up today? What happened? You're, you're analyzing. It's a complete different. So this, the second sign of a sound heart, when the human being disobey him, turn to him right away. Right away. Think of it. How many of you, and show me hands, this is not related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have someone you love in your life. Could be children, spouse, parents, it doesn't matter. How many of you? All of us. All of us, right? Somebody who's dear to us. Dear, love. And when the, their name comes in, you smile. Right? So if this person that you love got upset with you, something you did, what is your normal response? You're going to feel sad? How did I do that? Why did I say this? And I'm going to, let's see how I'm going to make it up. You call your friends. Can't tell you what I did today. Would you advise me? How should I make it up? Right? Yes? So what do we do when we do this to Allah? That's the sign your heart is sound when you act exactly the same way. You run to Allah says, Ya Rabbi, please forgive me. Ya Allah, Wallahi, I don't know. Ya Rabbi, help this poor guy, this poor girl. Help her, forgive her. Yunibu ilallah, they say. In the, in the, in the Islamic language, the inaba. It's not a tawbah, it's not repentance, inaba. You turn back right away to Allah. You know when you text somebody 
and, and you feel the, the way they responded, they got upset. You feel it, right? You all do. And then what do you do? Are you upset with me? Question mark. And the person, no answer. Then you know they are upset. <laughs> right? Please, and then it depends with this person. Forgive me, I really didn't mean it. No answer. Now you're going to leave a voice note. Or you're going to call. Why? Because you care about them. You don't want them to get upset with you. That's our relationship with Allah should be. I care about him, pleased with me. And he doesn't need me. You know that. He doesn't need me a bit. He doesn't need my salah. He doesn't need my siyam. He doesn't need my Quran. He doesn't need my hijab. He doesn't need me. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith Qudsi, لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم مجنكم If the first creation and the last creation and the ins and the jinn, all, all, the billions, all were as if they have the purest heart, everybody, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kingdom will not increase a bit. So when I obey Allah, it's for me. And when I obey Allah, I want to say it this way. And I love doing it. I, I like feeling it this way. I don't do it because I want to go to Jannah. I want to go to Jannah for sure. But I do it because I love him. He deserves it. He gave me a lot. And I don't want him to be upset with me. I don't want him to say, how much I gave you, and you still do that. That relationship of love, we need to bring it back to our life. We don't have this relationship with Allah on a, on a constant basis. We have the fear, and Jahannam, and the grave, and the death, and I need this, I need that. Change it. Change it to a relationship of love. So the second one, is you always turn to him. He gives you, alhamdulillah, first thing. He took away, qaddar Allah ma sha'a fa'al. I need something, I'm not going to anybody. I'm asking him first. Ya Allah, send me the person who will help me. Ya Allah, make the people who will interview me see my strength. It's always him through people. Is that clear for everybody? If you have this, and by the way, this is not hard. Wallahi, this is easy. It's just you have to keep reminding yourself, and then it becomes habit. So we are covering al qalbu salim and you can once you know what where I should be, then you know where I'm, where I am right now. What is the issues? So the first two we said, remember yesterday. Number one is that this heart has nothing in it but Allah, love fear, attachments, is all to Allah, by Allah. So when you love someone, and we all do, you have to ask yourself this question. Why do you love this person? She or he? Children, spouse, parents, friends. Why? If the answer, they are my children, that's not for Allah. If the answer, they make me feel good, that's not for Allah. If the answer is... Um, I don't know, I just feel good around them. That's not for Allah. There has to be a reason that you love someone. And that reason in a simple words. The person you love brings you closer to Allah. The person you love brings you closer to Allah. That doesn't mean you're not going to love your family or your spouse or your children. But that love, natural instinct, of course you love your children. But the love of the children, if it is taking me away from Allah, I'm going to put Allah number one. If the love of my spouse taking me away from Allah, I'm going to put Allah number one. That's why al qalbu salim is not something easy. But it is the goal, the ultimate goal. So that's number one. We said number two is what happens when you disobey Allah. What feelings? How you gonna make it up? How you gonna correct it? Number three. Remember, we have eleven. 
and I want all your questions and answers. I uh, requested the organizers. We're going to do it all in the afternoon. Because you may have questions, I may cover it. And then in the afternoon, you, as you see it, I think, on your screens, you can submit your questions. We had lovely questions yesterday. Or also sometimes, if not, I will take questions from the audience. So all the questions and answers, inshallah, will be in the afternoon. Number three, I'm going to ask you a question, of course, to make you keep you awake, right? Right. What's your relationship with the remembrance of Allah? Dhikrullah. And dhikr of Allah is many ways, many forms. So don't feel, do not let your brain think of one thing only. The dhikr of Allah could be saying astaghfirullah. So the dhikr in the tongue could be reading the Quran, could be salah, could be Quran inside salah, could be thinking of Allah, reflecting on his creation. So many ways. Dua is a major dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you need something, you want something. A question comes to you, everybody. You write in your notes and analyze yourself. Where I am from the dhikr of Allah? Ten out of ten is a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Always in dhikr. May Allah make us, that's by Allah. Zero, zero. I don't remember Allah at all. Period. We are neither this nor that. True? Everybody? Where are we now on the scale? Each one of us is different. I, as a person, am different per day. Or even by time. I wake up in the morning, I'm so attached to Allah, I'm doing my qiyam, I did my fajr, did my dhikr, did my uh, Quran, beautiful. Then I go to life. And Allah completely not there. In my dhikr, in my thinking, in my tongue. And then I come back, and then I go. So we swing. The, the fact, and let's be also practical and optimistic, the fact that you think of Allah every single day is good news. However, if you think of Allah only when you need Him, that's a huge problem. Only when you need Him. Think of it this way. I claim that you are my best friend. I claim. And I really love you and care about you. I claim. What do you hear from me? I call you only when I need you. To the point that when you see a text message from me or you see my phone number ringing, it says, okay, what does she need? How do you feel about me? How do you feel about me? Not genuine, not a true, opportunistic, is the message clear? What's your relationship with Allah? When do you remember Him? When? When everything is absolutely the way you want. Alhamdulillah. Children are perfect. The husband and the wife are perfect. The job is perfect. Weather is perfect. I have a home. Everything. Do you remember Allah here? Or when things go wrong? Which one? Which one? I want to hear it. And Allah repeated this concept in the Quran. He said it in Surah Yunus, Jonah, and twice in Surah Az-Zumar. وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ or وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ One time with Alif and Lam and one time without. What happens? When the human being is afflicted by dhur. Dhur, something I don't like can be anything, anything, headache, that I took the medication, it's not going away. Child is giving me a hard time. Um, the spouse is, is giving me problems. The job, I don't like it. I don't have enough money to, fill, to fulfill all what I need, whatever it is. وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ ضُرٌ أو وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانُ ضُرٌ دَعَى رَبَّهُ منيب. إذا مس الإنسان ضر دعا ربه منيبا إليه 
Look at this, how Allah said it. He called upon his Lord with full return to him. Is that familiar? Your child, you wake up in the morning and child is sick. And you come to the physician and they tell you, you know what? We don't know. This is really not going well. How is your dua? How is your dua? Tell me. And how is the tear? Where it's coming from? Muniban ilay. Fully. Turn to Allah. Your heart is focused. Right? And then see what Allah says. Thumma idha khawwallahu ni'matan minna. Then when we give him a blessing from us, نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ قَبْلِ Forgot completely what he was calling and who he was calling. وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ And he andada actually. And he made to Allah partners. Does that sound familiar? 